it's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. It's okay. Oh, I'm so worried. I'm so worried. Hello, and welcome to Real English with Real Teachers. In this lesson, we're going to learn some really native, natural expressions in British English to help you express your worries and feelings of relief, because these are quite common in life. So by the end of this lesson, you are going to be able to tell your friends, your colleagues, the people around you, how worried or relieved you are in English, using phrases that you don't find in your textbooks. We are experienced teachers. We've been doing this for about five years now, not on YouTube, but in general around the world. And we know that the most useful, valuable English expressions that help you connect with native speakers and other speakers of English are the ones you don't find in your textbook. So don't go anywhere. Charlie, how are you? I'm very well. Thank you for that lovely introduction. I hope you are all well. Um, so we're blessed to have this video sponsored by the one and only lovely italki. Guys, if you haven't heard of us talking about italki, then you need to watch more videos of ours, really, don't you? So italki is an online language learning platform with over 4,000 online tutors of pretty much any language you can think of, ready and raring to teach you a language that you desire. That's absolutely right. And the teachers aren't worried. They're very natural and confident teachers of English and other languages as well. And they're also very affordable. You can find teachers for around $10 an hour. And you have the luxury of choosing community teachers who aren't professional. And then you have the professional teachers as well. So if you want to work on your fluency, then I'd kind of recommend you go for one of the cheaper uh, community teachers. But if you want to kind of practice for exams and work on pronunciation and get more detailed feedback about your English, then maybe go for a professional lesson. That's right. And we did a video recently where we found out that if you are starting a language, it's probably better to get a more experienced professional teacher. And then once you go towards the intermediate fluency areas of the language, you can then pay, perhaps go down to a community teacher. But um, we should say that they're, they're available whenever you want, pretty much 24 seven, because they're all around the world waiting for you to say hello. So um, we're even on there, aren't we, Harry? We are indeed. If you'd like to book a, an hour lesson with us or an hour and a half, maybe, you can click that link below book yourself a lesson, and then italki will give you $10 of credits to spend on your next lesson. So you could take a lesson with Charlie and then realize, you know, you don't really like Charlie, and then take on with me. <laughs> Very good. Yeah, that, that's exactly what you could do. We've even got an uh, italki teacher in the comments. I see Elisa. I'm also an italki teacher. Hello. Welcome. Yes, so in the link below, you will find that $10 discount. Uh, but here we are going to teach you some useful phrases all about being stressed and relieved. And the structure is going to be us teaching you the language, telling you the, the, the phrases and the definitions. And then after that, what are they going to do? So we start with the phrases and then we're going to go into a story. So something worrying happy, <laughs> happened to me recently <laughs> and I've been telling this story to everyone uh, and Charlie's already heard this. Uh, so we're going to go through a, a story so you can hear these phrases in context and then. And then after that, we're going to get you active with the language that we've just taught you and you're going to exemplify them in the comments or the live chat if you're with us live. Exactly, exactly. Did you... I use that word rightly? Correctly, exemplify. To exemplify, yeah. Yeah, mm -hmm. nice, yeah. okay, good. I hope so, my, my dad will be in the chat box to correct you if not. <laughs> so uh, the first expression that we're gonna teach you today is uh, one of my favorites. 
and it's to be beside oneself and then you can optionally you can put with worry so uh, for example if you if you're really really worried about something you would use this only if you're really worried not if you're just a little bit anxious so an example i could say uh, yesterday i couldn't find my wallet anywhere i couldn't find my wallet anywhere i was beside myself oh no I was... did you find it yeah yeah it was uh, down the back of the sofa Ah, oh, typical Harry. Always down the back of the sofa. Yeah, I'm not. The wallet is. Yes, yes. Any, any belongings of yours that you lose. Yeah. yeah. Have you lost a passport? You look like a guy that would lose a passport. <laughs> that was, that, that's a bit offensive. But um, you know what? I've never lost a passport. But if I did, I would be beside myself. Um, I have had times where I'm packing for the airport. And I guess you know that desperate moment where you're like, wh wh where's my passport? Where's my passport? Mum! And then you realise you don't live with your mum anymore. Um, no, but she can still probably hear you because you're just down the road. So just a really big shout. And then she'll be, yes, darling. Yeah, I just open the window and say, Mum! And the neighbours like come down all worried. Yes. So there we go. That is to be beside yourself or beside oneself with worry. And can you use it in any other context? Um, sure. I'd say whenever you're really worried um, ab about anything um, and we'd, we'd normally use it in the simple tenses, you wouldn't say um, I have been being beside myself. You say, I am beside myself, I was beside myself. So I'd go for the simple tenses, past simple and present simple. Do you agree uh, with me there? Yeah, yeah, I agree with you. I just checked to see if you can have it with another uh, feeling. And oh, I, I think you can do it with like anger and be distraught beside, beside yourself, not distraught, beside yourself with anger or oh, grief. That, that's useful. So you can use it with being angry and with being worried. Yeah, yeah. So you can change the, the change the depending on the context. You could change the end. I'm beside myself with anger. Yes, Charlie lost my passport. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Charlie, I'm beside myself. What, what have you <laughs> done? Uh, and and then if uh, Harry was angry at me, I might indeed be bricking it. I might be bricking it which is quite a strange one, but very daily, very common, very native. So um, you can use a swear word to replace bricking. Um, oh. Shall I say it? Go on, Charlie, come oh, on. All right, uh, you can be shitting it, shitting oh. it. Charlie, please don't use obscene language on this channel. I'm so sorry, but we need to teach you the words of natives so there we go so to be bricking it or to be it and this means you're really really nervous and worried about something so for example um well i i said about if i lost harry's passport and he was very angry at me i might be bricking it thinking oh god what's harry gonna do is he gonna punch me in the face like he always solves his problems i don't know yeah i do I'll always punch people in the face <laughs> How many how many people have you punched in the face? What this week? Yeah. Six. Six? And it's only yeah. Thursday. So that's more than one a day. Yeah, yeah. Well, it's because today I punched the postman and my neighbour. So <laughs> yeah, lots of punches. How is your hand? Is it sore? Yeah, it's fine. I'm so used to punching people, my hands are kind of just they're just hard as nails. <laughs> There we go. So another nice phrase, hard as nails. Uh, nails are pretty tough. They're pretty hard. They can take a hammering, can't they? That's what they're designed for. So you can say, I'm hard as nails or my fist is as hard as nails. I don't think Harry's fist is as hard as nails, but it will let him have that one. What's the next phrase, Harry? Yeah, you're right. I should have said my fist is almost as hard as nails. There you go. I'd, I'd let that one go. Yeah. <laughs> so the next one is my palms were sweaty or my palms were clammy so sweaty <laughs> with this moisture you know coming out of your your body the pores in your skin 
specifically. Um, so we, we'd say this when we're really nervous, really worried, uh, or really scared. Um, when your emotions provoke uh, uh, a reaction like this and they make you sweaty. So uh, for an example, I could say, I woke up last night beside myself with worry and uh, my palms were sweaty. My palms were clammy. Clammy is another word for sweaty, clammy. Yeah, have you got clammy hands now? Because you're live, you sometimes get a bit nervous. I get a bit nervous. Are your hands clammy? I do, but no, my nervous nervousness um, kind of manifests itself in a different way when it comes to this. I, I need to go to the toilet before. Um, <laughs> to do a number one or a number two? Normally a number two, but I didn't have a time. I didn't have the time today. Um, so no, I'm actually bone dry. Uh, which is a way to say very, very dry, bone yeah, dry. I'll write that in. I'm bone dry, yeah, to be bone dry. Very nice. I'm bone dry. There you go, bone dry. And Charlie's yeah. writing them in the comments. So uh, thank you for holding that one in for us all, Harry. I appreciate uh, <laughs> that one today. Next phrase is something was keeping me up all night. Something was keeping me up all night and you normally say it it was keeping me up all night um so again it's all related to worry um if you thought maybe you had pregnated your girlfriend and you didn't want to you could say oh god it's keeping me up all night i don't know i don't know what to do should we get an abortion should we have a baby it's keeping me up all night harry what should we do oh my god um I think you should just have the baby. Don't worry about it. If you've impregnated Stacy, just kind of enjoy it. You're going to be great parents. Yeah. Thanks. Thanks. It's a lie. It's a lie. I should, you, I should you, say that just in case her parents are watching or something. We don't do that kind of thing. We don't. It's impossible to. What, sex? Yeah. Ugh, what's that? I don't do that. Don't, don't no. worry. Yeah, I imagine Stacey doesn't want to have sex with you either. <laughs> but Charlie, have you ever been bricking it about that? Have you ever thought, oh my God, Stacey's pregnant? Or Stacey's preggers, preggers? Um, so another, another phrase that we could often say, we had a scare, we had a scare. Oh yeah, that's good. Um, that's that often good. comes up with pregnancy, I think. We had a scare last month or something. Uh, to my recollection, no, we've never had a scare, which is a bit worrying, actually, for me. Makes, <laughs> makes me think I'm infertile. <laughs> oh, no, it's true. So you actually want to have a scare. In a weird, messed up way, I'd quite like to have a scare. Just to kind of prove, I know, I know what you mean. I feel like that about myself. I want to know that my, my little boys, they, they work. Yeah. But it would be terrible to actually confirm that they don't because it would change your dynamic with oh. romantic, the romantic world of your life. Totally. Completely, wouldn't it? You'd have to tell them or you'd have to hide it from them. And then, then the trust is gone. So if you can take anything away from this video, don't get your sperm checked out until you're ready. Yeah, exactly. It's not just an English lesson. It's also a counselling session. Uh, but what would you do in that situation? Would you bottle it up? Would you hold it in and not tell Stacey, bottle it up? Or would you would you tell her and kind of hope that she doesn't leave you? Uh, I would probably bottle it up for a while and I would speak to maybe you or I don't know who else. I'd normally go to my mum, but for something like this, I don't I don't know if I would. So, um, yeah, I'd bottle it up until I spoke to you about it and then I would decide on that moment I, I'd probably have to tell her but yeah I would go straight to my mum I think really I'd probably even mum mum you made me infertile yeah yeah well no I'd probably blame my, blame my dad for that no because my dad doesn't he, he's obviously got strong exactly strong sperm. yeah well it's, it's both of them or your own lifestyle yeah 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 well anyway <laughs> So let's get on to the next expression. So after you're really, uh, after you are worried, and then maybe you have um, a real a moment where oh 
it's okay, everything's okay. You need to say these expressions for expressing relief. You need to say that you are relieved. And the simplest way, and one of the most common, is to say, oh, what a relief. What a, oh, what mm. a relief. What a relief. What a relief. Oh, that scare is no longer scaring me. <laughs> Brilliant. Brilliant, Jazz. What a relief. What could you say? <laughs> oh, you're not pregnant. What a relief. There you go. Thanks. <laughs> I can now go to bed after such a scare. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. Yeah. You can now stop worrying that you are firing blanks. Oh, write that one in. <clears throat> to fire blanks is to yeah to to send sperm over not in the post but via the penis. Um, but they're not working. They are infertile little sperms. <laughs> fire, fire, blanks. So like blank bullets, bullets that that don't kill the enemy. Yeah. There you go. Do blanks, wait, do blank, are blanks rubber bullets or are they just the ones that make the loud noise of a, of a gun? Like, bang! <laughs> uh, the latter, they are the latter. They are the, just the loud noise. What, the ones that go bang? Yes. Right. Why do they go like that? Because that's closer to the microphone, so it's a louder bang. Oh, professional, very professional. Thank you. Um, so the next one, uh, are we done with that one? Yeah, yeah, what, to fire blanks? No, no, not to fire blanks. That's a side phrase. Oh. The main phrase was, what a relief. <laughs> yeah, I'm done with what a relief. Yeah. Oh, what a relief. Okay, brilliant. Not, there we go. Blanks. Yeah, there you go. So, um, I mean, it's a bit ironic if you if you know uh, the, the meaning of this in another way. But um, that's, it's... That's off, 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 off. Oh, yes. Thank you. It's a load off my mind. It's a load off my mind. So again, same as uh, what a relief, but another native way of expressing it. So um, let's go for another example. Uh, you, you think you crashed your car or you think someone crashed into you maybe, um, and you open the door really angry to see the damage, but there was no damage done. So, oh, it's a load off my mind that I don't have to go to the insurance company and sort out all of the, the uh, bills to do with the damage. It's a load off my mind. Oh, that's good. And that actually happened to you, didn't it? Um, on one of our latest immersion courses, you had a guy go into the side of the car. Yeah, yeah, that's right. And actually a better example of it would have been that happen. I take it back to the hire company and I pray that they don't notice it, and then they don't notice it, and I say, oh, it's a load off my mind, that. Because exactly. I no, no longer have to worry about that problem. I can put it to one side. Yeah, and that load, you've been carrying that with you during the day. You know, you've been thinking about it, so it builds up in your mind. So then it's, you're getting that load off your mind. Exactly. Yeah. So it is something that stays with you. So the, the damage of the car might not be long enough to use that phrase. But um, I was driving around the south of England for a good five hours. So I was definitely building up this load of anxiety. And then, oh, what a load off my mind, Harry. Oh, that's good. I'm glad, Chaz. I'm very glad. I'm very glad. And I could say, thank heavens. Thank heavens, which I should have written on the board already but it's thank heavens. And this is the same as saying thank God, um, but maybe you want to be a little less blasphemic. You want to not mention God's name in vain. So you say thank heavens, which is quite nice. Me and Charlie were saying, we don't really, we don't personally use this very much, but a lot of people do. Um, I imagine, yeah, people, maybe religious people would use this more. What do you what do you think, Charlie? I use thank God. I don't use thank heavens. Yeah, I think more religious people would use thank heavens because they don't want to use God's name in vain, as you said. And then there's an extra rude one. I said the other rude one. So you tell me the other one. Go on. Oh, God, I'm not going to write it, though. It's just too naughty to write, you know? Oh, I know. Okay, so the, the really rude one is... 
Thank fuck. <laughs> but you wouldn't say you say, oh, fuck, thank fuck. Thank fuck for that. There you go. Yeah. Thank fuck for that. That's a very, very native phrase. And then um, going on to the very short but useful one. Few. Few. Oh, few. God. That's lucky. That's lucky. Oh, few. Oh, phew, he found his passport. Oh, oh. So the, the pronunciation is the same as like few, like a few. I have a few car crashes every year. Yeah, exactly the same as F-E-W. Yeah, but P-H, few. Few. Oh, oh, few. And then anyone would use this. This is great in, in many different situations. It's not rude. Um, so you can use it a lot. You can yeah okay and the next one the next one is you ah this is this is a really good one you had me worried there so this is something that well you could also say about your, yourself you could say something had me worried so the phrase is to have somebody worried to have somebody worried and this is how we use it and um, so charlie had a, a problem with his car and he could say that had me worried that had me worried and you could use it in the present oh god this problem with the car has me has me worried it has me really worried yeah yeah you could and then as a listener you can say um you had me worried there you had me worried. If you're if you're telling me a story, I could say, "Oh God, you had me worried there." I, I want to know the result. What what's happened? Tell me, tell me. Oh yeah, exactly. So I could say, Charlie, I think I'm. I thought I was um, firing blanks, but it turned out that uh, my my little boys are working. Oh, you had me worried there. Yeah, actually, yeah. So it's on reflection of the whole story, isn't it? Yeah, exactly. on reflection of the whole story. You know the result now. So you can say you had me worried. Nice. OK. And then the last one that we've got for you before we turn it into Harry's dramatized story. You you can't wait for this, guys. You, you, you've got to you've got to stay around because honestly, it's a, a real corker. The, the <laughs> last phrase, you've no idea. A corker, a corker means uh, a really good, really good thing. Yeah, a corker, a really good thing. There you go, a corker, a corker. Brilliant. And then this last one, you've no idea how blah, blah, blah. Um, you've no idea how worried I am or you've no idea how worried I was. My mum would always say that to me if I don't text her. Not now, but when I was younger, if I didn't text her that I'm coming home at some time, she'd say, you've no idea how worried I was last night. How rude of you not to text me. You're so selfish. Mm, that is selfish of you, Charlie. Yeah. I had no battery. So if your mum, if you don't respond to your mum within the hour, does she say, oh, you've no idea <laughs> how worried I am? <laughs> Bless yeah. Bless her. My mum would have been exactly the same. Yeah, if I'm I was sure. back 10 minutes after six, I, she would have thrown a fit. Really? Yeah, 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 yeah. They were also, they were, yeah, they were quite strict with timings. My, my parents are incredibly punctual. Oh, wow. <laughs> like, ridiculously punctual. Oh, you must, I'm surprised that you're, because we're not the most punctual people. You, how come you've turned out like that? <laughs> I, I don't I don't know I don't know I think um as a teacher I think it's natural for a an English teacher to be late for things I don't know if that's if that's not a thing. <laughs> that's not true <laughs> oh. if you are an English teacher could you leave a comment and tell me are you are you late to lessons <laughs> <laughs> I don't think you'll have much support there um so there we go those are all the phrases now it is time to put them all into practice uh, with Harry's amazing story. And uh, it, will, it will live up to that expectation, don't you worry. And then after Harry's story of you practicing how it goes in, into a real situation, 
um, we will get you to example them in the chat or in the comments. So, Harry, what's been going on for you for the last like two weeks? Okay, so um, I've been I've been beside myself for the last for the last week and a half, I would say, um, over a matter related to the bank. Right. Okay. So you've been beside yourself, or you've been beside yourself with worry over a matter with the bank. What's, yeah. What's going on at the bank? Have they been taking your your money? Uh, well, here's the thing. I, I I used to live in Spain. I lived in Spain for a year, and I had a bank account in Spain with Santander. Um, and I worked there for a year, and then I left Spain. I came back to England. And when I left Spain, I still had some money in my bank account. And I think I had like maybe over a thousand euros. So I always, yeah, I know, right? <laughs> Teacher with money, who'd have thought it? <laughs> so over the last, it's been about three years since I lived there, I've been using this, um, this card when I go to Europe, I just use it as and when I please, um, meaning when I want, as and when I please. Um, and I always show off about it. I always say to people, oh, I've, got, I've got an account in, in Spain. So when I go to Europe, I, uh, I don't spend any money. I just, I use my money when I'm there and it's kind of cool. That is nice, yeah, wow. So yeah, I remember we've been to multiple places together and you haven't even needed to use real money it's felt like it was it wasn't really yours anymore because it's so far away so far from the moment that you earned it exactly yeah it was so long ago it's like i forgot it's like free money exactly so people say to me like harry are you sure you haven't just kind of um activated an automatic overdraft um and an overdraft is when you go that the bank kind of give you a a line of credit and you're going into the minus and when you have an overdraft normally you have to you have to pay back um inter interest which is like additional money on top of that but exactly. i i always i always said to people no no I, i'm not i'm not bricking it i'm not i'm not shitting it about that uh, because i know that i had over a thousand euros in there um and there's 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 no worries there's no worries Okay, so there were no worries for a while, but then we went to Amsterdam last week, and this is where this the story gets juicy. Um, this is where you started shitting it, isn't it? I started shitting it because, because Char Charlie brought it up, didn't you? I, yeah. I think I don't know how it it came up. I think I might maybe said I used my card. Yeah, you said you used your card for another beer or something. I said, I can't believe you've still got money in there. There's no way that you haven't spent over £2,000 in the last three years abroad. No way. So this comment from Charlie, it, it affected me deeply. Um, <laughs> and I thought, oh my God, what if, what if I am just accumulating debt? Um, and I, we went, we had a good evening, we had some drinks. We maybe even had a little smoke and uh, I woke up at like 5 a.m. and my palms were sweaty. My palms were sweaty. I had clammy hands, very clammy hands. And it wasn't the only clammy thing. Um, <laughs> and and really, it, it, it kept me up all night. I was up for I was up for maybe two hours looking online, um, worrying about overdrafts. I'm just going to write that word for people. I put and, it in the chat. Yeah, an over. Do you mean an overdraft? An overdraft, exactly. Yeah, yeah. And I was I was reading online about the overdrafts um, at Santander, and there were lots of articles about. Oh my God, the charges are terrible. Um, there are automatic overdrafts in Spain. So I started thinking, like, and I, I I convinced myself that I had possibly accumulated thousands and thousands of euros of debt. Wow. So would... Yeah, because an overdraft, an unplanned overdraft would normally charge you a huge amount of interest every day. So just being £50 into an overdraft, an unplanned one, it would be like £5 
uh, of interest every single day and that that would be humongous so you were losing sleep over this i was losing sleep over this exactly that's another really good expression i was losing sleep over this and it was also affecting my mood in the day because every every moment where we weren't busy making videos and working i was thinking about the debt that was getting bigger every day oh god yeah. yeah and and then you went back after amsterdam you went back to england and you were still stressing about this you were still losing sleep you you still had clammy hands and then you said to me two days ago i think i need to <laughs> i need to get a flight <laughs> tell yeah. them that bit because that's the the, the hell, hilarious bit for me so it was keeping up and I, my palms are sweaty i was shitting it bricking it i was beside myself and i'd had enough so i called Santander Bank um, and tried to renew my online banking details. But to do that, they send you an activation code to your mobile phone. And my mobile phone was a Spanish number. That's the one they had on record. So it wasn't working. I couldn't do it. And they would not tell me my balance over the phone. They wouldn't tell me if I was in debt or if I was in the plus, if I had money. So I was getting more and more worried every single day and losing sleep. So I started looking at flights and I was going to do a, a return flight to Spain and back, possibly in the same day or over two days, literally just to check my bank balance and pay off debt. Amazing. Amazing. So that would have been a happy trip. You should have taken photos in that trip because you should remember that one. But um, you didn't in the end. Why didn't you go? I didn't go because uh, Charlie helped me out with a different number to a more an international office. And they found a solution for me. And but the worrying didn't stop there because they had to ask me a series of uh, security questions before they allowed me to, to find out my balance. And one of the questions was, have you asked for a loan? Have you asked for a loan oh, from God. Santander Bank? Uh, what's a loan, Chaz? A loan is a bit like an overdraft, but it's an intended one. And it's uh, got more regulations of how long you, you have until you have to pay it back, how long you have free interest for many different things and complications that I won't go into. But, uh, <laughs> A loan, I think most people will know what a loan is as well. Okay, cool. There you go, a loan. Um, so I said, no, I haven't had a loan. Um, and I, by this point, I was really, really shitting it. Um, and um, so the lady, this, this amazing lady, actually said to me at the end of the call, she said, okay, I can now tell you your balance, Mr. Mm -hmm. Giles um because that's how she said it she was spanish and she said you have 190 euros Hooray! Dollar! yeah baby <laughs> and i'm still really happy about it i'm i'm uh, it, uh what i said to her is i said que alivio because I was, it was in Spanish, but that means what a relief, what a relief. Uh, and it was, it was, it was amazing. It felt so good. And I thought to myself, well, that, that is a load off my mind. That is, oh, what a relief. That is a load off my mind. And I felt like a new man. That is fantastic. I'm, I was very happy for you. I think you have been uh, elated ever since, haven't you? You've, you've been on top of the world for the last 48 hours, I think. I have, yeah. I've told like seven people. Um, and now... Well, now 100 plus. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <clears throat> and the thousands of views that follow, hopefully. Um, <laughs> Fingers crossed. <laughs> uh, but really, you know, thank heavens. Because, you know, if I few, uh, thank fuck, if, 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 if I'd been in, in that debt, like, you know, thousands of pounds of debt, it would have just cleared me out. I've never had, have you ever had financial worries like that, Charlie? Like, real worries financially that it's going to just cripple you? 
Many times, yeah. Most days, I think. Yeah. How do you manage it? <laughs> you get used to it. You get used to it. No, no, I, I, I know what you mean. It's a very worrying feeling. The, the, the story that I can think of that relates strongly to this is when I put diesel in, no, when I put petrol in Stacey's mum's uh, car and it was a diesel engine and I ruined her car. This was the first time I met her and I ruined her car and I was Googling like how much it would be to cost uh, to fix the engine. And it was going to be like 5,000 pounds. And I was just like sinking in on the spot, like wanting to disappear and land in my own bed and just like, ah, no. yeah. Oh God, that's so bad. But, but that turned out okay for you, didn't it? But do you reckon they would have, they would have made you uh, pay that? Um, it's a tricky one. It really is. I don't know. I, I did actually pay the majority of the fee to fix it, but it was only 150, 120, something like that. Oh, but okay. um, yeah, I don't, I don't know. I don't know. My parents would have probably had to help me out as well at that stage because I definitely wouldn't have had that kind of money. <laughs> yeah, I reckon your mum would have been even more beside herself than you were in that in that case. And they would have bailed you out. Yeah, they, they hopefully would have bailed me out, but I can't rely on it too much. <laughs> no, you can't. But yeah, that's a last resort. To bail someone out, to rescue someone in a difficult situation like this, to bail someone out. Um, nice. So, few, few. Everything was okay. The car was fixed, and I've got 190 euros. Cash back. <laughs> Brilliant. Should we get everyone putting these these uh, phrases into practice? Yes, let's. And we've actually been honoured with the presence of Stacey. I see that she's commented saying Harry's make it rain move looked like a clapping seal. <laughs> Thanks, Stacey. So, um, Stacey and everybody else watching, why don't you get these phrases into action and send in your comments, tell us a story that um, personified this. You know, you had a very worrisome moment and then after that, you were relieved. Hopefully, you were relieved. So, think about your story, use the language that we've um, labeled throughout the video and then get it in either as a chat uh, live chat or as a comment. Exactly. And so everyone can see them, Charlie. Should we should we pop them on their board or should we write them into the chat? Well, I will put them into a Quizlet after the lesson oh. for you guys to go and access. So if you've been around the whole lesson, then congratulations. You should be able to remember some of them. Um, and Harry's just exampled them. But uh, if you've just joined us, I will put the uh, phrases all together in a Quizlet deck and I will uh, put that in the description box. So if you're watching this live, come back in like 10 minutes or so. Um, but if, if not, then enjoy it in the description box. Lovely. OK, guys. So, oops. so write in your, your comments now. I want to see your, your, uh, your use of these phrases. So perhaps, Charlie, we could kind of recover them just to remind people of what these phrases were sure yeah okay so the worry phrases were beside yourself or beside oneself with worry or with anger uh the next one the next one is uh to be bricking it or to be shitting it to be bricking it or to be shitting it. <laughs> shaking it <laughs> i'll chick you in a minute Oh, I'm bricking it. Okay. And the next one is my palms are sweaty or palms were sweaty and clammy. You could say, oh, you got clammy hands. Yeah, I'm bricking it. I'm bricking it. Leave me be. Okay. I'm nervous. Yeah. <clears throat> and the next one is it was keeping me up all night or it kept me up all night. And Charlie said, um, said a nice alternative. Um, I was losing sleep over something. So to lose sleep over something. Is exactly. Nice. Okay. And then on to the relief side of the story. You can say, what a relief. Oh, what a relief. 
what a relief great and the next one is it's a load off my mind it's a load off my mind the next one thank god thank heavens or thank fuck and you can always say it like thank fuck for that or thank god for that can't you thank, thank god, god for that yeah you can't say thank heavens for that sounds thank weird heavens. does seem a bit weird I, I wouldn't say that it's not been used thank heavens for that yeah it's a bit odd yeah thank heavens so thank heavens sounds best on its own and the first, the last one uh, is few few the third to last one is few uh the second to last one you had me worried there you had me worried there to be uh in harry's defense there was a line split on our google doc so uh it's a new page it looked like the end of the lesson but there was one more for harry to say and goodbye everyone <laughs> imagine i just end the lesson then um uh, the next one uh, sorry have you just done you had me worried there you did that yes you? right thanks uh the the lot and the last one again the actual last one is you've no idea how you have no idea how worried i was but you could use this with other emotions as well you've no idea how happy i was you've no idea how angry i was you've no idea how sad it was i was there we go so those are the phrases get thinking and make sure that you use these in your active vocab and we would love to see them. Um, if we don't get any in now, we'll get active on the comments under the video after we end this call. Um, what are you thinking, Harry? I'm thinking we've got some in, we've got some in. So Marianne Green has said, I'm losing sleep over my exam results at uni. Really nice. Lovely, lovely, yeah. I only passed a few of my exams. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> she's cleverly used p-h-e-w knowing that she should be saying f-e-w witty lady witty lady okay have we got any more um so simi has said having a british accent is keeping me up all night well you so you can use keeping someone up all night in a different way but that would some imply something sexual wouldn't it like if you said <laughs> Stacy kept me up all night. That would mean that, <laughs> you know, you had a night trying to have kids. Because everyone knows the only reason Charlie has sex is to reproduce. Or try to reproduce. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> so um, in that way, I don't think we can use it, can we? No, no, no. But you, well, you could say I find, I find his, his voice is so... It's so creepy. It keeps me up at night. Yes. It makes you it makes you kind of feel a bit uneasy and ugh. I guess so. I guess so, yeah. I, I know what you mean. I know what you mean. Reza okay. has said, just said thank fuck. Um, very good. I guess Reza is reacting to our story. So thank fuck indeed, Reza. <laughs> and then we've got a new one in from a Russian um Maria? No. How'd you say that? Huh? That one. Anyway, the comment is, I've booked a trip via an app today, but 20 minutes before the trip, the driver cancelled it. I was beside myself with anger. Brilliant use of the phrase, I was beside myself with anger. That is perfect. Um, I would change the tense. I booked a trip. Simple past. I booked a trip via an app today, but 20 minutes later. Oh, 20, 20 minutes before the trip, the driver cancelled it yeah nice very nice um and we have hanifa aki what a great name i was beside myself with my son um waiting for this waiting the scholarship it was loaded in my mind you have no idea how that's keep me up all night okay nice nice uh, nice effort there i'm going to try and do a little correction um so i was beside myself while um waiting for my son's scholarship, perhaps. Um, but when he got the scholarship, it was a load off my mind. Uh, you have no idea how that has kept me up all night. Brilliant, thank you for that. And then Ruxar, uh, when I found out that I had failed my exam, 
um, maybe plural, my exams, my exam. Uh, I lost my sleep over it. Okay, you could just remove the my. I lost sleep over it. But fortunately, I hadn't. I was worried out of my mind. Um, I wouldn't I wouldn't put that part in there. For, but fortunately, I hadn't. It was a mistake of the teachers. They had me worried there. Very nice. Last part. Nice. Really nice. Uh, I've got to read this out from Reza. <laughs> Stacy kept me up all night. <laughs> Reza, you naughty boy. And uh, Tina Nuwaya, sorry. Uh, I missed my train in a foreign country one day. I was beside myself with worry in that moment. And my hands were <laughs> my hands were pissing a lot. Okay, that was good. A, 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 a good variation of my hands were clammy. Yeah, I, I like that. My hands were sweaty or clammy. They weren't pissing. No, we can't. We can't say pissing a lot about no, your hands. No. I, I, I admire the attempt. Um, thank heavens, I found an English. Thank heavens, I found an English-speaking person who was able to help me. Really nice. Very nice, Tina. Lovely to see you here. Tina's a student of mine. Oh, yeah. Are you yeah. going to tell her off in class for using the word piss? Um, well, I'm, I'm racking my brains, hoping that I didn't teach her that. I'm, yeah, no, I'm sure I didn't. <laughs> yeah, Tina, you need to say your hands are pissing. <laughs> yeah, but thank you very much, Tina. And then the last one we will read out right now is from uh, Kirana. Uh, you have no idea how sad I was when a person told me that my cat, who went astray, good word, for days, was hit by a car. But apparently it was a different cat. <laughs> what a relief. <laughs> now my cat is home. Oh, that is amazing. Oh, uh, I, t I had a lesson with Karana and she told me her, her cat went astray. Oh, hey, there we go. Well... I'm glad um, that it wasn't your cat that got squashed by a car. Um, there is, isn't it? Expressing relief. Yeah. Oh, good. It wasn't. It was someone else. It was my neighbor's cat. Oh, phew. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you could imagine telling that to your, your neighbor. Oh, I was so worried because um, I thought my cat was dead, but it was actually, it was yours. What a relief. <laughs> yeah, look, it's got, it's got like kind of two legs left. Yeah, because yours is a, a ginger one, isn't it? Yeah, my, mine's black. Yeah, this is the ginger one, dead. Yeah. Okay. All right, so we'll leave it there. You guys have been amazing. We hope that you enjoyed all of those phrases about worry or uh, concern and relief. We hope you enjoyed Harry's story about his banking situation in Spain, España. Mm. Um, so any, any last words, Harry? Uh, no, just uh, a nice one to end it off from Daniela. Hello, Daniela. Thank fuck Root went live today. I was beside myself with boredom. That is excellent. And that's a nice one to end the class. So thank you very much for joining us. Um, remember to subscribe if you haven't already. Visit our website for classes and other services. And also give this video a like and watch another video. See you later all and uh, keep learning English.